How do we prioritize? How do we decide what's more important than something else? There's only two factors, and this is what we do in risk management areas, uh, is measure the probability of something occurring and measure that against the impact if it does occur. If something is probably going to happen, but you know, hey, I don't know, it's kind of in the middle, it might or might not happen, but if it does happen, it's really bad. We deal with that area a lot in aviation because as a pilot, most of the things fall into that category. Probability of something occurring is really low. It's so low that we think we're completely safe in an airplane, right? If I told you you're a million to one safe in an airplane, it's a million to one chance that you're gonna get hurt in an airplane, that feels pretty safe. Everybody, does that feel like you're pretty safe? Well, then you are, unless you're the one. If you're the one, you're no longer safe, are you? So I don't like playing with statistics and probabilities. I like understanding things this way. What's my probability of something occurring? And if it does occur, what kind of impact are we going to have? How bad will it be? Is it fatal? Is it not? So this is how we analyze. This is the analyze part. Do we analyze what our alternatives are? Once we've recognized a high priority, we think about what can we do about that? We don't just go to our automatic response. We prioritize something that's very high priority. But in the past, that's what works against us. That's what I meant when I talked to Charlie Rose and said, the safer we feel, the more vulnerable we are because we become victims of our own experience. What worked before in a particular threat or in a particular opportunity may not work again. Just the smallest change. So we have to increase our ability to recognize those changes that happen and not just automate the way that we see things around us, to be aware. It's a mind space, I call it a mind space that we have to get into to do that. Institutionalized. This is the double-edged sword. This is what gets us, is our experience. What happened in the past, what we did in the past, is not necessarily the best response. The things I did in college are probably not the right things to be doing today. I just, just saying. And we're back to realize. And this is realizing that we make these choices. There's a big distinction between decisions and choices. People think it's the same word. It wasn't to me, and if you read the first chapter of my book, you'll understand that. When you make a decision, it's based on data, probabilities, what's going to happen, my past experience. If I'm making a choice, now I'm enrolled. I chose that. I chose to make a decision that ended up with people dying. That's tough to live with. That's something that changes your life forever, those decisions, those choices. I'm going to share with you a little bit about Analyzing, now that we understand what those six points are on the star, I'm going to share with you how I use this, how we used it in the aviation world, how we use it in uh, the oil industry, and how we use it in the operating room in the hospitals. This is how we use this wheel, the wheel of fortune, uh, the wheel of success, but it's also the wheel of protecting yourself and improving your risk IQ. I recommend that you have that card with you, that you think about it. There's six questions on the back of that card, and those six questions, just taking the time to, to ask yourself, ask your brain those questions will improve, improve your risk IQ exponentially. It puts you into a mind space where you can recognize threats around you and hazards around you. You'll be in, in your environment, you'll be present. You'll be able to easily prioritize those things that you've recognized as threats. You'll be able to analyze them and say, what can I do about this threat that I've just recognized? I've never seen this before, or this combination of threats. And it'll also help you to understand that the institutionalized response and behavior that you typically would do in that threat situation may or may not be the right thing to do. And then it'll help you also to keep your mind open and realize things about the way you're thinking. Thinking about the way you're thinking. And what that does, has anybody heard the program Super Brain by Dr. Tanzi and uh, Deepak Chopra? Uh, it's a group, he's, uh, Dr. Tanzi's on our, our research team up at Massachusetts General. And uh, this is the one of the things that he says, is if you look at that card every hour, if you remind yourself that you are not your brain every hour, then it'll, it will put you in a totally different place. You'll recognize opportunities you never thought existed. You'll be able to act on those opportunities, and you'll act in a way that's new and different and innovative. So this is all about innovation, and it's all about protecting yourself at the same time, because it's the same part of your brain. The challenge is, if we get really good at all five of these things, it's wonderful. If we start expressing ourselves in just these top three items, we get complacent. 
This is what the atrophy of vigilance is. This little triangle, when we recognize something, we automatically prioritize it as important or not without thinking about our environment. And then we skip over the analyze, we skip over what alternatives we can do, and we go straight to institutionalized behavior. This is the way we're gonna to have to respond to it. We get in this triangle. I call it the atrophy of vigilance. The chief pilot at United Airlines calls this RIP. Okay, that's pretty, pretty telling. It's funny, I'd been given this lecture for about three or four months before he got the lecture and I gave it to him and that's what he brought up to me. So I have to give J.R. Russell uh, credit for that, RIP. It's the triangle of complacency. What is complacency? That's it. When we automate that, and I said our brains are super efficient, and they are, these efficient brains are always working. They're always working, they're always looking for a quicker, faster way. Quicker, faster, better. Better, not so much. Quicker, faster, yeah. But better, I don't know. I don't know, just think about it. Because if all we do is react normally, subconsciously, we, can, we disqualify threats. We don't notice the street sign changing from 25 miles an hour to 35 or 35 to 25. We don't see that. We don't see the school crossing sign because it wasn't there before or because the bus was there that we had the children unloading. We don't see those things because we're stuck in this. And interestingly, this is not just something that we walk out tomorrow and do. If I wanted to be a weightlifter, I don't start weightlifting today and say, tomorrow I'm gonna to win the weightlifting championship. I gotta build those muscles. I gotta exercise this stuff. And your brain, like your two little fingers on your hand, have to be exercised. It has to be. It's just another part of your body. And it has to be exercised. That's the purpose of that card is to ask yourself those six questions, no matter where you are, before you do anything, when you get up in the morning, when you go to bed at night, whatever you do, take the time to ask yourself, am I in this space right now? Am I in the right place? Am I making the right decisions? Am I making the right choices? Are the choices I made in the past the right ones? Those are the questions that you will start asking yourself and you'll be able to exercise those parts of your brain so that you'll have, rather than have this RIP triangle, you're gonna have the triangle of awareness. This is self-actualization, this is realization, this is the warm and fuzzy stuff that people always talk about. This is where you become part of your environment, part of your society, contributing to society, being innovative and new and looking at things in different ways. That's the triangle of awareness. Together you end up with a nice round circle 